and welcome to Sim.BC where I am joining you with a bit of a honey spiced cup of gree at a convenient time of 10 past 1 a.m. in the morning, mate. In the morning. And I don't care how unorthodox this start is because in comparison to yesterday, we're pretty much flying with flying colors. Am I right, people? Am I right? Couldn't be worse than it was yesterday. Even so, a solid end to a good project, I must say, the best so far. However, that's not what we're gonna get into today, no, no, no. What we're going to get into today is one of my many thoughts out there, one of my many ideas that I've been thinking about and tinkering about at times. And I was tinkering about this so much and I gave it so much thought that I thought I'll write it down as a potential topic of discussion for a future time. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to discuss a bit of a note I had and thought was a good idea. What is it now? Four and a half to five months ago, something along those lines. And this is when I was in the midst of going from Bordeaux back to Sweden. And it was the most infuriating process I've ever taken part in especially when it comes to this sort of series that I'm trying to produce here, the daily upload schedule. And the reason for that is working condition, working condition, working condition. Bloody A to Z, it's working environment all over the place. As I've been stating previously, you know, uh, I believe that structure is A to O, you know, A to Z, however you want to say it, in an organization. Especially when it comes to maintaining production, when it comes to maintaining quality in a service. And what is the problem, then, when you're moving your area of, I was going to say expertise, but it's wrong, your area of work, so to say. What is wrong when you change your work environment? It might not necessarily be wrong. I do encourage people to change their working environment once in a while, to get into new patterns, to learn new things, but oh my lord, is it an infuriating process at the time, because something that can generally take you, let's say, 45 minutes to an hour, took me about 24 hours when I was moving, and I know I was touching upon this lightly at the time when it was current information, when I was doing the actual transition. I even think I took it up when I was doing the transition, getting back from Sweden to getting back to my actual apartment. I think I touched upon it then as well. But today I would just like to raise it once again because soon it is time for me to leave this apartment to go to another place. So, <laughs> I meant that to come out a bit more madly. So, <clears throat> so what I want to just shed some light on once again is the idea that a stressful, or rather, a stress-free environment can be seen as really stressful. If you're outside of your comfort zone, if you're outside of your habits, of if you're outside of what you consider to be the general environment where you produce the best. Even though it might be a really safe place to be in. And this sort of contradicts what I was saying yesterday, or rather reinforces it, depending on how you want to see it. What I was talking about over the last week, roughly, in the last project at least, was that in order for you to apply imagination, in order to extend your creativity, in order to make yourself better and both your social life and your work life, you need to be comfortable with yourself and where you are. Now, the reason I'm saying it can be both for and against that point is because if we believe that you are fully comfortable, then it's no problem. Go for it. Change your working environment. However, if you're just comfortable in what you do, but not necessarily your working environment yet, or vice versa, changing your working environment can be really detrimental to the project if we're just looking for pure efficiency. Which, at the time I was writing this, I sort of did. I was thinking it was ludicrous that I went for, or rather went from a sort of stressful environment, but where I knew where all the bits and bobs were, right? And producing a video that took, as I said, roughly 45 minutes to two hours to do, upload, you know, rendering it, everything. 
I had it on a wrap between 40, you know, one and one to two hours. I had it on a wrap. I had it on a go. I had it in my mind. I had everything planned out, every single step. And that was still considered probably to be quite a stressful environment because I was still making the change and packing everything down and I had my exams and there were so many things other than just producing a video that was needed to take into consideration back in the day, back in time, half a year ago, even more than half a year ago by now. Um, and still, when I moved to a sort of what I would consider to be relatively a stress-free environment, sort of the in-between or when I got back to Sweden before I got to my apartment. It was still rather stress-free. The problem was just that, and I think that this was really evident in the videos back then. And you can go back and watch if you don't believe me, but... I really didn't know how to set up anything, right? So instead of having to think about and delegate my time to making videos, you know, one to two hours a day, now it was a 24 hour bloody nightmare that I had to take into consideration all the time because the internet connection wasn't stable all of the time, um, the lighting wasn't stable all of the time, the way I was doing the lighting solution wasn't the best, um, my microphone wasn't really on point, I didn't really know what to do, I had a microphone but I didn't want to put it up and use it at that point in time where I was, but I still wanted to, but I didn't really want to go through all the hassle based on that I sort of kept it semi-hidden secret by the, at the time. <clears throat> so there were many, many problems going through this, even though, yet again, and I would like to stress this, it was a reasonably stress-free environment for me, as long as we don't consider the actual element of making videos. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm, I have been sick though, so that's probably why my, why my voice is cracking all of the time. So, what I want to enforce, or rather what I want to look at, is the idea that you can... What... Uh, how should I phrase this? A stressful environment where you know where everything is, where every bit and bob is, can still be more productive if we just look at the efficiency, right? Than a rather stress-free environment where you don't know where anything is. Now, I know you will make the argument that if it is a stress-free environment, that probably implies that you know where everything is. And if it is a stressful environment, that is probably as a cause of relation, so to say, of that you don't know where anything is. But what I tend to talk about is that your situation, everything that considers you around your working environment, let's say. So if we say that your work is maintained as the key and everything else around you is what I'm sort of describing as the environment around you. Sort of set, get what I'm saying? Yeah, good. So every, all of the key features is there, but you're in still of a, in a chaotic environment. Then you can still work with it. However, if you're in a stress-free environment where all of the key things are not really in place, that can really mess you up. <laughs> wow, it sounds like you're gonna get destroyed. Now, it can really mess up the pacing and the structure and how you want to actually work with things. It can mess up your entire efficiency. So that was a whole lot on me, my take, and me moving from Bordeaux to Sweden and back here. Now, the reason why I take it up now and why I hadn't before is because I will be going through this exact process in just a few days. And why am I saying a few days? Well, because all the things that you see around me, right? And all the things that you can't see around me, but is in the apartment, you see. I do have a bed I sleep in, you see. I don't just sleep right there at my guitars. No, all of these things need to be packed down and moved again. Because, yes, I'm going back to France. So... We're gonna go through this all again, going from what I would consider to be right now sort of a both optimal and stable and stress-free environment, or rather a stressful, it's going to be a stressful environment, to a rather stress-free environment where I need to relocate all of my key points again for making videos. We will see how all of that goes. <laughs> um, 
but obviously the positive thing or the positive aspect with me going back to Bordeaux and going to the exact same apartment is that I will already have a lot of things figured out. Why? Well, based on experience now, isn't it? So that's probably the only way that you can really get around this stressful environment and stress-free environment no matter where you are, is that you build on well, previous experience in getting around new problems. Now, obviously, that is the reason why you're moving in the first place. It should be, right? Because you want to accumulate more experience, you want to accumulate more creative thinking, gaining some perspective so that the next time you are faced with a similar, what you would say, problem, a similar obstacle, you will be able to solve it just that little bit better because you have already experienced it. But, the, probably the entire reason why I did this video is because many people do consider it to be easier to produce and to maintain the service if you are in a stress-free environment. However, what I've sort of touched upon is that it's very hard to define what is actually a stressful and a stress-free environment, right? Because most people probably mean or first and foremost that we're talking about your life, where you're at personally. Because if you yourself is stress-free, everything else is going to unravel as a factor of that. As a consequence of that, you're, are, you are so comfortable with what you're doing. So everything else is just going to unravel, unfold and place itself in the, what you would say, the greater scheme of things. However, as I would like to say it, and as I'm sure many people do agree with as well, is that it's probably, if you're looking at efficiency, more important to know some of the key features of what you're supposed to do and know where those specific, yet again, bits and bobs are at and where they're located. Now, based on my experience, when I've taken this up and tried to discuss it with other people, they tend to not agree with me, but... That's the world, right? I mean, we live in a state of unbalance, even though the world is stri striving for fairness and so on and so forth, whatever and whatnot. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is everything for me today. I would like, though, to leave you with this that I've been thinking about for a while. Let me just give me a second to collect my thoughts so that I don't say this wrong. <laughs> if you've lost someone close to you now, more in the past or you ex expect that it will soon be to happen then I would argue that you have two definitive choices to make when this occur you can either go down a road of depression hatred and sadness or you can go down the road of forgiveness happiness and fulfillment. Now think about that for a while because I think there is a lot to take in in just that simple statement. Either, the, uh, other than that is what I'm trying to say. Have a nice one mates and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.